Good morning, everybody. Staying here from Rocky Creek. Welcome back to another episode with us. And this morning, we are going to process our gray broilers. Now, the time that we are processing them is about, I'd say, a week and a half to two weeks earlier than what I would have liked. But the way scheduling and some stuff is going on, I just now is the best opportunity for us to get it done. But I'm going to do it different. This is not the way I've ever done it before. And this will be my first time doing it this way. So if I'm successful, then you should be successful as well. But the great thing about the way that I'm doing it, if it works, is that literally all you need to be able to do it is a knife and maybe a cone. That's it. Anybody's got that stuff. So check them out, guys. There's the gray broilers. I actually came out to their run area around 3.30 close to four o'clock this morning while it's still dark and was able to round these guys up and put them into the the you just bit my finger why you bite my finger but we rounded them up into the chicken tractor on a budget that we built for about 45 50 bucks um, and this is going to be easier for us to get them from because these guys are super fast almost like an egg laying hen would be and i would have ran all over their run trying to catch them the other way so putting them in here should make it a little bit easier because then we will have our little flip top to access and grab them that way. I think they're just shy of the size of the Cornish crosses, but I personally am a dark meat kind of guy. Uh, Mrs. Rocky Creek, she's definitely more of a white meat kind of person. She loves chicken breast, shredding it up, things of that nature, but I'll eat like leg quarters all day long or some like barbecue chicken thighs. So their legs are significantly longer than which I believe is going to give me much more meat in terms of that, which is going to be good for what I'm doing today. So I've been watching a lot of videos on how to skin a chicken. A friend of mine said that he always skins his chickens. Well, I like my whole chickens, but I don't want 40 to 50 whole chickens. I want to be more kind of versatile for meals in the future. So my plan this year all along was to do half as whole chickens, half of them kind of parted up into different parts. So our focus today is going to be to get the breast, the tenders, and the leg quarters. And watching a couple videos, I think I got an idea of what to do. So we're going to give that a try. But also, it's just me with about 20 chickens to get done. And I'm hoping this is going to save me some time um, and getting it done this way as well. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's just get rocking and rolling and start working on these guys. And then I'll show you, if it's going pretty smooth, I'll show you how I do this skinning method and how you if you're a brand new homesteader or you're very limited on your funds and you can't buy like a chicken plucker like i had then this could very well be an option for you the only thing you're going to lose is just the skin other than that everything else is exactly the same so pretty much my setup is going to be cone take them to the table that's where we're going to do the cutting the buckets below the table is where we're going to put the refuse things that we're not going to keep and then on the other side of the table i have my cooler but because normally our whole chickens, we submerge them into like a very cold ice bath. Um, and that helps to pull any leftover blood out and also just kind of lets them stay chilled while the rigor um, goes out of them, which allows the meat to kind of be softer and easier to package. Um, I'm not really, I don't really know the best way to do it when you part the chicken up prior to. I was worried that if I just like threw like a cut chicken breast or a cut leg quarter into a bunch of ice water that it would get all like soggy and soft and all that water trapped in when I go to vacuum seal these because I'm going to use a food saver vacuum sealer to kind of do these in individual meal packages. So what I've decided to do is I just want to keep them cool. So I actually took, I got an extremely large cooler which is going to be much bigger than what I need and I really just put a bag of ice on each end of it and left the inside area just completely plain. Um, just to keep the temperature down in there and I'm just going to set the pieces in there and then clean it all out when we're all done and then package it up So but that's what we're going to try. We'll see if it works out. It may be a fail, but let's see what happens So let me let you take a look at these gray broilers um, Like I said, we're about two weeks earlier than what I would have liked But they're still overall a very good sized bird very much reminds me of the Freedom Rangers or the Red Rangers that we've done in the past uh, Beautiful bird. I mean honestly if this was like an egg laying hen Flies are going to be my problem today. Um, if these were egg laying hens, I mean, they'd be beautiful. Um, I really like the mixture of colors. My guess is that it's going to be similar to like a Red Ranger 
mixed with a barred rock based off of coloration. I'm not sure how they do it, but um, body wise, their breast doesn't feel huge, but feels decent. Uh, thighs feel fairly, fairly large. So I think they're gonna dress out fairly similar to the Red Rangers. There's a couple hens in there that are fairly small, um, which it'll be okay. We can use those for, for something, but uh, a couple of these guys are pretty good size. So we'll see how they dress out when it's all said and done. All right, so I've done about four of these so far, and there was some trial and error because I've never done this before. But this early on is what I found works best. Wet the bird first because the feathers are getting everywhere. It's sticking to everything. So I've been wetting the bird down. Then I'm removing the legs. Now I will say, when I do it the normal way, removing the legs is pretty easy, but with the feathers on, it makes it a little bit harder to see. Mrs. Rocky Creek, she's having a little hard time. She's being trooper trying to record this for me. <laughs> so we remove the legs and then we're gonna grab the, the loose skin here, just below the sternum. And we just wanna put a little hole. And once I get that little hole, it's hard to see with the feathers. I just get my hands in there and then we're just gonna give it a big rip. And that exposes all that breast meat right there now i learned you really can't be gentle with it you got to just rip it um, you really can't hurt nothing i've discovered doing a few of these now this is kind of the pain in the butt part is then we're going to get it off the thighs right here so what i found is i run my finger along the outside of it and pull it down some while doing so i push my thumb through this hole then i can hook all that right there and pull it down like a syringe i push the i'll just call that a knuckle per se i push that down while i pull the hard part is getting the skin off this little foot see if this other side will go a little smoother so i bring come along the side here Poke my thumb through, pull up. I ain't kidding you guys, all the other ones went 10 times smoother than this one. This one's the one I got the most trouble with by far. There we go, now that gets that off. Now by wetting it, this, the feathers kind of just slide off versus before, they were sticking like crazy. So then from there, I'm just gonna keep pulling back the skin exposing all that leg quarter right there same thing on this side pull back all that skin exposing all that leg quarter and exposing the rest of that breast mrs rocky creek's really struggling i feel like this is not my thing <laughs> this so part. then so then to remove the leg quarters easier, we're gonna pop the hips and you'll see the bone pop through right there. Pop through right there. And then we'll start just cutting around where that joint popped. And we got our leg quarter right there. <laughs> oh gosh. No. Trying to make it where y'all can see it makes it a little more difficult too. Oh, so there it is leg quarter then we get the breast off cut cut and it's going to start to kind of slide off of another piece of meat you're going to see in there and that's actually going to be the the tender if you want chicken tenders for something i'm just going to cut away i found getting those leg quarters off first makes getting this breast meat easier Otherwise the legs get in your way, but so then there's the chicken breast. You 
These things got long, skinny, deep breasts, which is making it a little more difficult. There's your breast. And then that right there is the, the chicken tender. If I had a fillet knife, this would be a little bit easier, but I've just been cutting along where I see that tender, being careful not to puncture into the cavity because it has all the entrails still in there, the guts. Yeah, don't do that. So then that would be your chicken tender. You could just cut it all together, but that kind of separates on its own pretty easy. And we tend to use the tenders more for like some casserole dishes and stuff. So I'll keep them separate for us. And then there's your other chicken tender. So you got your quarters, breasts, tenders. If you wanted to save the gizzard guts and things like that, you're more than welcome to. Um, for us, we're not really in the position to need those. So then I just take him whole and throw them in my bucket. And then all I do before I put them in the cooler is I just then getting the last little bit of stuff off, which I'll do a final cleaning before I put them in their vacuum sealer bag. That's pretty much what you end up with. Two leg quarters, two breasts, and two chicken tenders. And that's pretty much what you end up with. So we'll throw this in the cooler. We're going to keep rolling from there, and we'll show you the finished product. Hey, guys. So we finished processing all of the chickens by skinning them, and I packaged them into a food saver by vacuum sealing them. Uh, now this was my very first time ever using a food saver, so there was some trial and error. It took me about three tries to get it to work properly. Uh, I wasn't getting proper uh, vacuuming. It was sealing, but it would like pull the air and then it would seal, but it would release all the air prior to. And I figured out I was pushing the bags in too deep. But once we got it figured out, it actually went super quick and super fast. So I only brought out one package of each. This is actually several days later and it's a scorching hot day. Um, the humidity is super high also. So I'm underneath a little bit of an umbrella. So the coloring may be off. Uh, but what we ended up doing, like I told you, we did uh, tenders, breasts, and leg quarters is what we harvested from these birds. Um, and so we did just packs of tenders, kind of like this. There's two, four, six, eight, nine tenders in this pack. And we did pretty close to that, eight or nine in each. And we got about five packs of the tenders. Then we packaged our breasts up into four to five breasts per package most of them i did five and it worked out pretty good uh, you can see breast size in comparison to my hand is about each breast is probably just about the size of my hand and they're probably about that thick the vacuum sealer kind of compressed them a little bit but prior to packaging them i'd say they were probably just shy of an inch maybe three quarters inch thick on the thickest part of the breast meat and then my favorite is I'm a dark meat kind of person is our leg quarters. Um, I did five leg quarters per package as well. And there is some frost on here because I just pulled them out of the freezer. And where the bone is, there's just a tiny bit of blood that accumulated there, which is normal with where the bone is on the chicken. So packaging wise, these turned out well. And I did the numbers of four to five breast and leg quarters per package. Uh, because for our typical family, um, you know, little man's not really eating much other than just a little bit of this here or there. So for us, a family of three, five does fine, two for me, two for my wife, one for Madison, and then little man just kind of picks off of various parts of ours. So for right now and where we're at, this size packaging works out pretty well. Guests come over, we just pull two out. So what's my opinions on skinning? Would I ever skin again? I think I definitely would skin a chicken again based off of a couple situations. Number one, skinning would be beneficial because if you're limited on time and you got to get a harvest in, it was much quicker. Essentially, I was able to process 19 chickens by myself in the same amount of time I usually could process the same amount but with a partner. So I essentially cut the time in half by doing the skinning. Another benefit to doing the skinning is, as you saw, if you're limited on funds and you're early on in your homesteading journey and you don't have a plucker and maybe you don't really want to hand pluck all that time, then all you need is a knife, a hose, 
and I had a cone, which the cone is very optional. Um, and the hose just helped out to keep the surface clean, keep help with the feathers, keep them from sticking everything. So essentially a knife is all you need to do this method. So if you're very much on a budget and you're just getting started, skinning may be your option. Now what are the downfalls to skinning? Well obviously I didn't pull the guts out, which I could have. You could have still done that with skinning um, and saved your livers, your gizzards, things of that nature. Um, but for our sake and for timing and what we needed, and with what we got coming up ahead, we chose not to. Now in terms of cooking, I love the skin on a chicken. Get that skin good and crispy or get it charred on the grill um, and also helps preserve hydration on the meat when cooking. You obviously lose the skin when you skin the chicken. But for us, we harvested two batches, one whole, one like this. I can easily cut up one of those whole chickens when they thaw and part them out if I want to the skin but for us for everyday quick meals pulling and not want to have to do a whole chicken and wait for it to thaw this way of packaging with the breasts the tenders and these quarters will work fantastic for us we'll braise these leg quarters i'll grill these leg quarters i'll smoke these leg quarters and they'll be just fine the breast meats you know i can i can bread and fry those which i can't wait to to do some of those you know and just do some breaded chicken sandwiches i can also grill them and put them in salads that'd be fantastic and then of course our tenders the kids will love those so we'll do all kinds of stuff and i like the tenders for casserole dishes so guys remember i had never skinned ever until now only way i had of learning was what i had watched online so if i was able to skin chickens with literally zero experience when recording this there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do so if you want to harvest your own chickens but maybe are limited on budget and time so guys i appreciate you coming along i hope this video was beneficial to you i hope everybody's having a wonderful week and guys as always y'all be good and we'll see you here very soon on one of our next episodes thanks guys